Hello everyone, this is Bob Browner with the Community Coronavirus Update number 71. Uh, today we'll talk about uh, will we fumble in the red zone and will vaccinating kids and vaccine passports be the next partisan food fight? Um, so you know, five weeks ago, I used this image. Uh, would, would we fumble the ball on the on the on the, on the five yard line? Uh, it's looking like we might, uh, and we're actually finding out who across the country is and is not fumbling the ball. Uh, we already can see if you look at the COVID Act Now site, you know the, the states that are in the red zone are essentially fumbling the ball. Uh, half of the new cases in the country right now are actually happening in in Florida, Michigan, and Northeast. So those those areas alone account for half of new cases. Uh, with Michigan being the poster child for fumbling the ball, as their numbers are headed actually up to maybe even worse than they were back in November, December. Uh, and so they're fumbling the ball. Uh, but all, all just like all politics is local, all public health is local as well. Uh, if we look at Nebraska, we see that there may be certain air regions in Nebraska also potentially fumbling the ball. I'm uh, right now most worried about the Omaha metro area. Uh, if we look at the Lincoln-Lancaster area, um, we're still sort of hovering. The problem, of course, is during the holidays, the Easter weekend, we often have a, a lack of testing for a while. So this little drop here could be a, temp a lack of testing because of the holidays. So where are we really in Lincoln uh, at this point? Uh, Compare that to Douglas and Sarpy County, where in the Omaha metro area, uh, they were very much on the way up. We don't know what's going because we have a hole in the data because of Easter weekend. So the next couple days, will this continue to go up and will they report, will they uh, basically do just as bad as Michigan? Uh, we'll find out in the next week or so, basically. Uh, hopefully the rest of other areas of the state don't follow them. Uh, here in Lincoln, as some of you know, I, I follow the UNL dashboard uh, every day, and the reason why is that they actually have the best surveillance system at the University of Nebraska, both Lincoln and Omaha. So you can look at their dashboards and see what's happening. Uh, unfortunately, one of the concerning things in, in, uh, at UNL is that their uh, positivity rate doubled in the last week. Uh, so again, we'll follow this over the rest of the week and see. Hopefully, this won't continue to go up because the, the where you see it first is in the young people. Um, and now the deaths won't be probably won't be as bad as last time we had an outbreak should we fumble the bulb the good news is that a lot of people have been vaccinated but the people keep forgetting not everybody has been vaccinated and even in the elderly although most have been vaccinated not all so 20 to 30 percent of the elderly depending on age group are still susceptible in lincoln lancaster county and more so in areas out of lincoln lancaster county because in other areas of the state uh their vaccination rates lower so still we could be infecting 30 percent of old people and that's what happened when we killed off the last 2000 nebraskans Plus, it may be uh, a good chunk of the of the 25 to 64 year old age group has not been vaccinated yet. Uh, one of the problem with the new B117 variant is a not only is it more infectious, it is also more likely to kill you. So, although the rates of death is low in this great group, it's still, it's higher than it was though, and so we could be talking about hundreds of dead Nebraskans uh, if we don't do the right thing. The other thing is we are not going to hit herd humanity unless we also vaccinate the young people, so ages zero to 24 year uh, year olds. Uh, this is going to be a big discussion I think this summer about what do we do when the kids come back to school this fall will we require them to be vaccinated for example I don't think they will which we'll get to in a minute um, we, the good news is though we do know that the vaccine does work in young people and it appears to be safe so Pfizer released uh, the, uh, the outcome of its uh, phase three trials in ages 12 to 15 uh, so I highly I think it's highly likely the next couple months we will get approval for kids down to 12 to 15 and then of course we'll have to start vaccinating kids kids over the summer and how, will it be and how will we handle the return to the school uh, based on vaccination. Other information, uh, well, the Kaiser Family Foundation has been doing a great job tracking uh, people's willingness to get vaccine, and they break it into five categories, which I think is good. One is, you know, the already been vaccinated, two is get the vaccine as when I can, wait and see, only if required, and definitely not get the vaccine. And so requirement can bump your percentages up a bit. So if you look at the, the, the average of across the country, 13% don't want to get it. 7% will only get it if it's required. Well, that if we need to get to 80%, we can get there without requiring the vaccine. But if we have to get to 85 or 90%, we may have to require the vaccine, and that would get us enough to get herd immunity. Most experts say it's somewhere between 70 and 90%. So how do we get enough people vaccinated? Uh, well, we might be able to get there without it being required. And I think there's a good chance we can. Uh, the problem though, is there's some subgroups. Uh, the biggest one actually is party affiliation. Uh, one of the old red herrings, people focused up on the race and ethnicities that minorities didn't want to get the vaccine. Turns out they actually do once the, once they're communicated with. And so the reason why the numbers were lower for the minority population was two problems. One, they weren't being communicated with, and two, they weren't given access. And so one, now that they've communicate, better communication is happening, they have better access, it turns out that there's not a big difference on race and ethnicity about whether they get vaccinated or not. 
uh, again, the Kaiser Family Foundation, there's been a lot of uh, outreach to the uh, black community specifically, uh, but also other minorities, and it's working. Essentially, they, they can see the evidence just like everybody else. And so when the communication is well done with the right message and the right messenger, uh, there is no more hesitancy in the minority community. Our biggest problem still is who do people trust more than anybody else, their doctor and nurse? That's still the one place you can't get vaccinated in many areas is at your doctor's office, the one place people trust the most and uh, for getting vaccinated and for information. Uh, so this still baffles me. Why, why is it that we aren't allowing doctor's offices to give coronavirus vaccine right now? To me, this makes no sense. Uh, the next section, of course, vaccine requirements for kids and travel. Will this be the next partisan food fight? And it's kind of looking like it. And a lot of it's based on uh, kind of partisan sound bites with a very uh, incomplete understanding of the issues and history for that matter. Um, so I really like this op-ed. Partly it's a bad messaging. So the, the, uh, this, uh, the folks write about, uh, I think the thing that jumped out to me is why are politicians so good at crafting languages to get elected, but so bad about communicating simple policies to keep people safe and alive? Um, well, I don't know. I think sometimes they're, they're, they're focusing more on their own uh, political career than the safety of, of the of constituencies that they're supposed to serve, and sometimes just frank misunderstanding. So here's uh, some things I think maybe will help clear the air at least a little bit. So HIPAA, uh, people are, are uh, advocating HIPAA as if it's the magic Trump card that prevents everything, and that is not true. Uh, one thing I often talk to people when I give uh, t public health talks is what does the P in HIPAA stand for? Uh, some people t say, think it's privacy or protection. That's actually not what the P in, in HIPAA stands for. It stands for portability, actually. Uh, and so HIPAA is a broad law, and it has some good intentions, but sometimes it's often misused, People basically because people don't understand what it really means. Uh, yes, there are some guarantees for security and privacy and some standards for health information. However, they are not absolute. There are many exceptions to HIPAA. One of those is public health or an emergency, and we are in a public health emergency. So HIPAA does not apply in every instance. Uh, sometimes, uh, uh, and the other thing that people think about uh, is we really need access, better access. And, and frankly, as an individual, I want better access. Uh, interestingly enough, there's a lot of debate on passports. Well, uh, I actually already have access to my vaccine information through the state of Nebraska that I can already get on my s smartphone. You can access this too, by the way. And I put this link uh, on the notes section on, on the YouTube video, or if I sent you the email, it's in the email chain. Um, you can literally enter this. Uh, you can go to the Nebraska State Information, enter your information, and lo and behold, there's your vaccine verification right there. Uh, comment though, when you're, pass, when you're putting up your vaccine selfies, please block out some of your identifying information like date of birth. Uh, notice I've left uh, my mother's maiden name there because this isn't actually my mother's maiden name, it's actually wrong. But block out that information if you're going to post a vaccine selfie. But I literally already have the ability to verify my vaccine status on my smartphone by going to the site. Uh, however, by, by showing this, I am giving away more information than I would like to give. That's why we need an app so I can simply have a check. So let's say I use the app Common Pass and I'm checking in at the airport. It would be nice to just simply be able to show them on my Common Pass app, check here, yes, I've been vaccinated, without disclosing this other information. So the app actually protects your information. It's not over-disclosing information. Uh, the other thing is that, that in the op-ed, what they talked about is we need to quit saying passport. We need to say vaccine verification because va verification gives you more choice, and that's what we want in this whole thing. So when you're going to travel, uh, there are three things that are often that could, could be done, and it could be combinations of the, of the three. Right now, because there is no vaccine verification, when I'm going to take my flight here in a couple weeks, I'm going to have to wear a mask. I'm going to have to get tested even though I've already been vaccinated because there's not a verification system for this right now. So I will go through the hassle of going to get tested even though I've already been vaccinated and I will wear a mask as well. But if we had verification of vaccination, we might not need masking or we might not need pre or, pre or surveillance testing. And so the a verification system, a easy to use verification system for vaccination gives us more choice. It does not restrict our choice. Uh, and now there are gonna be restrictions of course, and those are very reasonable restrictions. So people are forget, forgetting uh, about well history. So for for example, can the can the state can the government make you get a vaccine? The answer answer is yes. That was uh, decided by the Supreme Court over a century ago, and I've got a link to this discussion in the notes section as well. So you can go to this Supreme Court case. You can look at it yourself. Uh, also, can your employer get, make you get a vaccine? The answer is actually yes, they could. Now I don't think either will, but they could, and that is already established law and has been for quite some time now. So this again is nothing new. Uh, I think what is most likely to happen is what happens in some healthcare facilities around influenza vaccination. 
So a lot of healthcare facilities, if you uh, enter the flu season, they will give you the choice. Either A, you get a flu shot, or B, you wear a mask all, uh, for the rest of the flu season. Uh, and I think the same thing could be, that could actually be the compromise for our schools. You could either A, vaccinate your child, or B, your child will have to wear a mask. Uh, and that would actually solve both things, because that gives you choice. You don't have to get the vaccine if you don't want it, but you at least have to protect those around you by wearing a mask, because the, the source control of wearing a mask is not that far away from the source control of wearing a vaccine. So again, give people choice, don't make them, that you can pick each, either one. Uh, I will likely do the same thing uh, in my own place of employment. Um, uh, again, schools, it's nothing new to require vaccinations in schools, so we could go there, and that could happen, actually. Uh, and here's a New England Journal article talking about how we got to vaccination requirements, talks about measles, uh, things like that. Uh, those of you with children hopefully already do know that the state of Nebraska does require immunizations for several of these vaccines, but not all vaccines. So, uh, for example, you're not required to have an HPV vaccine to go to school because that's not a disease that could be acquired through casual contact, whereas the rest of these are. Uh, many, Several of these are respiratory viruses, for example, just like coronavirus. So at some point, I think there, we may be required, but I'm not, probably not by this fall. But it is something we need to discuss. Uh, and this isn't new. I mean, we do it for all kinds of other things. So we need vaccine. So some of you, when you go, to, when your kid goes to camp, you have to verify vaccines. When they go to college, when they go to the military, uh, I work with Rotary Youth Exchange, and part of the Rotary Youth Exchange application is verifying your vaccination status because you can't go to many countries without having the right vaccinations. You can't go to many schools without the right vaccines. So this is nothing new. And so people are acting like this is some new concept infringing on your freedoms. This has been the case for decades, and it's the reason why we don't have people dying of measles and polio and things like this because we did this and we need to remember the, the lessons of history here. Uh, so again, the, the point is that verification, not, not necessarily restricting your liberty. You can travel as much as you want, you just have to be traveling safely if you're traveling with others. That's the point of this. Um, the other thing that I think we need to start working on is getting back to expertise over partisanship when we're talking about healthcare. Uh, everything seems to be a partisan food fight. Uh, we're not looking at the expertise. We're looking at, it's all about control uh, and requirements, but we need to bring in the experts. So this is a great article from Washington Post about what Wisconsin did right, because they are now one of the best, uh, highly, most highly vaccinated states. Uh, they didn't choose the mass vaccination route. They focused on public and private health care providers, and so that's what happened with West Virginia as well. They focused on pharmacies, whereas Wisconsin doctor's offices and pharmacies. And so this is the way to get to higher vaccination rates, not through mass vaccination centers because there are access issues if that's your only focus. So hopefully we'll get to that in the future. And Nebraska has a history of, of focusing on expertise over partisanship. It's just that we seem to have forgotten it. Uh, this week an article came out from the Millbank Fund about a group of us who have been working on on primary care and improving population health for the, for the last 12 years. Uh, it starts off with one of our uh, politicians who I think was one of our best experts until he was term limited, uh, Senator Mike Glor from Grand Island. Uh, he was a former hospital CEO, so had a lot of expertise in healthcare when he became a state senator. Well, one of the things he did is he convened a group of us so he could bring the right people in the room with the right expertise, uh, both insurance companies and healthcare providers uh, and public health all together. And so we were making a lot of progress in Medicaid up until 2014 when, when unfortunately Senator Glor was term limited. And then that state uh, leadership kind of fell away because there was nobody left to take his place who had that expertise and knew how to convene people uh, in the right way. This group has now moved uh, under the auspices of Ali Khan and the College of Pu Public Health. That's where we've been convening lately. And so we've actually started uh, gaining ground again. And this article talks about the transition from uh, Senator Mike Glor to Ali Khan to our Align group. Uh, and so we do this at the state. We've done this in the state level before, and we could do it again. So that's my hope going in the future is we get past the partisanship and start going back expertise. Uh, again, we've also done this at the local level. So years, 12 years ago, we had a mayor's uh, task force on the healthcare safety net. Uh, you'll recognize a lot of the names in this where we did bring a lot of the experts across the country from healthcare, from the hospital, from the city council. Uh, and actually a lot of the objectives of this task force were achieved and it's time for us to get back to this again. We need to bring expertise back into the public view. These are also open and transparent meetings where it had the right people uh, in, in place. And right now, a lot of things just happen behind closed door and that just makes everybody more more paranoid. Um, so going forward, of course, the, the other problem that people need to keep in mind is it's really hard to legislate or mandate any such a complex thing. Uh, all of these things to be safe are, are pretty complicated. So we try to put things in place like distancing of uh, three and six feet. That's inherent, you know, it's, it's unfortunately inherently arbitrary when you're talking about a complex uh, uh, equation. And so what I tell people, like, look, when I go flying this next uh, few weeks, 
yes, I've been vaccinated. I'm also going to wear a mask. And of course, so hopefully there's going to be some ventilation in the, in the, uh, the cabin of the airport. We combine several of these things because it takes several layers to stay safe. Uh, the same thing uh, could happen going to a restaurant, for example. I'm vaccinated, but I'm still a little hesitant to go into a crowded restaurant uh, with the new variants. But that doesn't mean I have to stop going to the restaurant. We still go to the restaurant. Here's us. Uh, actually, my wife and I went last night to Shakunin. Uh, my wife, my daughter told us about this uh, new sushi place downtown, and actually it was very, very good. Uh, the baffling thing to me is we walked into the restaurant, and most of the tables were full, but nobody was sitting outside at the time. But then they seemed surprised that we wanted to sit outside. We had, it was a beautiful evening. We sat outside, and as we sat outside, I think then some more people started sitting outside. Uh, so I'm not telling you don't go to a restaurant or bar. I'm just telling you go outside at a restaurant or bar because the outside is so much safer. Uh, we can keep Nebraska deaths below 3,000. Uh, again, just like we've been saying for a long time now, wear a mask around people you don't know uh, with unknown vaccination status. Avoid those crowds and find stasis. Keep your spaces. Keep your distance and get vaccinated when your time is up, called. Uh, so uh, hopefully this is helpful to you. Again, uh, usual disclaimer, uh, this is where I work. Uh, this is the link to the site, healthylincoln.org, where the past videos are. Uh, but, of course, these are my opinions, not necessarily uh, those of the organizations I'm working with and for.